understand the Weston A. Price Foundation a lot. I know what they recommend. Uh, I've been to their conference. I've read almost all the materials that all their authors have put out. And uh, I, what I wanted to share with you tonight is what I think would help you guys improve your health the most, because that's what I'm interested in getting at. Uh, and what I think is probably the biggest mistake the Weston A. Price Foundation uh, now we know that nuts and seeds and foods like this are, generally speaking, are healthy foods. If you take an average American off the street and you replace their soda with almonds, they're going to have a huge health improvement because of that. Um, it contains tons of nutrients, tons of vitamin E, which is very protective against what is going on right now, which is what I'll talk about in a second. And uh, there's no doubt that it's a healthy whole food that we can consume tons of, and we'd be okay and have good health. Um, but what we have in the world today is this huge epidemic of, you know, what I call omega-6 overload. Um, in the beginning of the 20th century, we started using vegetable oils. We've never used vegetable oils in the history of the world. And we started using corn oil and soy oil and margarine. And the biggest dietary change that occurred in the 20th century, without question, is the increase in the consumption of seed oils. 800% in terms of between 1905 and 2005, I forget the year. Um, but it's like an 800% increase in seed oils, 1100% margarines and things like that. We know, like I said in the beginning, all the restaurants are using vegetable oil to cook everything. It's in all the different salad dressings. It's, everything is fried in vegetable oil. All products that are on the shelves are in vegetable oil. It's the, it's the cheap commodity. Uh, we use soy and corn, we turn it into oils, and that becomes cheap calories that we put into our food supply in the basin. Um, but what we know is that the composition of our polyunsaturated fats in our diet directly influences the composition of our cells and tissue. If you consume 10 times as much omega-6 as what is considered normal, you will have 10 times the concentration of omega-6 in your cells. Uh, Dr. William Lands, who is a doctor who has studied lipids and he studied these polyunsaturated fats, create an actual mathematical model on a spreadsheet that will tell you if you eat this many grams of omega-6 and this many grams of omega-3 for this amount of time period, your cellular level of these two competing fatty acids will change by this much. Uh, but the problem is that the people in the United States have anywhere from 10 to 15 times the omega-6 composition in their tissues because we have a 100-year history of eating this massive amount of seed oils, which has only increased over the last 50 or 60 years. Um, and these, seeds, these seed oils, this excess of omega-6, which is a type of polyunsaturated fat that predominates in these seed oils, like soy oil and vegetable oil. Um, so the issue is that we have this massive multi-generational, multi-generational cumulative issue that has resulted in a specific imbalance. And again, we get back to Natasha Campbell McRae's philosophy of this is a specific diet to deal with a specific disorder. Well, this, if you have 15 times the amount of omega-6 in your body and in your tissues as what we consider healthy, you can't just can to eat healthy foods and expect that problem to go away. And the reason it's a problem is because this omega-6 gets formulated into what's called a rocketonic acid, or AA for short. Uh, and this AA is used to synthesize all these different inflammatory molecules, such as tumor necrosis factor alpha, and interleukin-6, and all these other complicated sounding nerdy terms. Uh, but it gets you know, these are all associated with all these inflammatory disorders. Even Harvard is saying, oh, you know, heart disease is 
we all got inflammation? Obesity, inflammation, cancer, inflammation. They're finding all these direct links between inflammation and all these degenerative diseases. Um, and it's all, you know, all this is synthesized from this huge pile of the rock amount of which we carry in extreme, extraordinary, and unheard of and unprecedented amounts in our cells and our tissues. And there's only one way to clear it out of the system. And it is to actually follow a diet that is very low in omega-6. Uh, we hear a lot about omega-3s, and omega-3s do compete with omega-6. And the mainstream has done a good job at getting a hold of that and saying, OK, everybody, take your fish oil, take your cod oil, let's get you a bunch of omega-3 uh, to help bring that back into balance. But really, the problem is omega-6. And, and omega-3, I know there's a lot of health claims touted for omega-3, but the bottom line is that it's the most unstable fat in the world. There is no more unstable fat that's it oxidizes more easily when it comes in contact with heat, light, and air. And inside our bodies, it forms what's called lipid peroxides and some other nasty sounding things that basically age us more quickly. Uh, our skin ages more quickly. Uh, these fats are just not something you don't want to deal with an omega-6 problem by piling on the omega-3. That's just replacing one problem with another. Omega-3 is immunosuppressive. It has a lot of issues. You don't want to consume a lot of omega-3. You want to deal with the real problem, which is people consuming vegetable oils and too much omega-6 that you could never possibly get in a normal diet or normal foods. I want to address that. So the West Bank Rice Foundation is all about, you know, people, they come across that information and they're so excited they get to eat tons of pork now and they cook all their food in lard. We get to order uh, goose fat from Mother Linda's, and we get to eat all the chicken skin, and our new snack now is crispy nuts, and we eat tons of walnuts and pecans and almonds and all these things that are incredibly high in omega 6. And yes, those foods, those healthy versions, they're not like vegetable oils. They contain lots of omega, uh, they contain lots of vitamin E, which is one of the natural antidotes for this unstable, highly volatile, polyunsaturated fat, um, it's, it is, can be helpful to consume a bunch of nuts for your average person because of all that vitamin E and because they already have this huge issue. But it's, the best strategy is to actually spend some time on a very targeted diet, reducing all your polyunsaturated fat as low as possible. <coughs> and using something more like coconut oil to displace the omega-6 as opposed to fish oils and things like that. Coconut fat is the most highly saturated fat there is. And it, the more that ratio between saturated fat to unsaturated fat in your diet, the more you're protected from this lipid peroxidation and the production of acrolein and some of the things you see with excess omega-3 consumption. Um, you know, but the bottom line, I guess, is that I, and I, you know, all my materials I have in 